the water supply to the house comes from a cistern and I pressurize a system in the house with an RV pump and boy there was a while there where at night when everything was quiet occasionally I'd hear that pump cycle which I hoped was just uh, pressure equalizing in the system but soon realized that it was probably a leak somewhere and I couldn't figure out where it was. I traced the whole system and, and couldn't see anything. And then the stain started to bleed through the plaster back behind the toilet. And I knew that, up oh, I've got a union that has failed inside of the dustcrete wall. So this was a great opportunity to get in and see what extended water presence inside of a dustcrete wall would do to the integrity of the material. There have been, uh, of course, people commenting on my original Duskrete video with concerns about mold and rot and insects and all those sorts of, of things. So it was a good opportunity to get in there and see what after two years the inside of this wall looked like where there had been the presence of a, of a very small leak in the plumbing. So once I got in there uh, I realized that a lot of those concerns were erroneous and I think that by looking at the integrity of the material and all of that you'll probably come to the same conclusion. So let's dig into this wall and see what's going on. Using a big flathead screwdriver and a hammer, I chipped through the plaster to expose the dust creep beneath. I found that it was relatively easy with these tools to dig away at the dustcrete. It still had good integrity. I used this fiberglass drywall reinforcement tape to prevent the plaster from cracking between the wooden framing member and the dustcrete, and that worked pretty well. So digging that out of there, that exposes the rest of the dustcrete section that I need to remove. The supply pipe is coming down along that 2x4 and then tees just below there to supply the mixer valve for the shower and the toilet tank supply line. So there's our offending member. I used compression fittings on this uh, section of the wall and probably didn't have my uh, tool adjusted quite right and one of these rings didn't get tight enough. I didn't go through and check every single one of them, nor did I pressure test the system before I mudded everything up, which is foolish, but this is what we get. You can see that the texture of the material and the integrity of the binders is still very good, even though it's been wet. My trusty assistant, of course, so we're going to go in here with a shark bite, and fortunately, because that's a little bit larger than the barbed fitting that was in there, I'm able to just cut these without having to add any more pipe. So just clean up the dustcrete off the ends of the pecs and push these fittings together, and we'll be ready to mix up some dustcrete and fill this hole. So this is just a small batch of dustcrete. The sawdust was a little wetter than what I usually use, so my gallon of water was a bit much. It was a bit sloppy, but all in all, it held in the wall and worked out all right. So just got this really well mixed, and then in we go to slip form it into the wall. First, I wet the surface down so that we wouldn't get a complete cold joint between the two, and put a form in there and just pack the dust creep behind the pipe and down into the hole and then slip my form up. I'm anchoring it to that 2x4 with screws and then clamping it on the other end of the wall. This is just a shower stall on the other side. So packing in all the little corners. As you can see, that dust creep is a little soft, but I can still slide this form up as soon as I've packed it. And I'm basically just letting it run a little wild because I'm going to come back in and trim this with a oscillating multi-tool.
and just basically coming in and removing about a half of an inch of material so that I'm at the same surface of plaster when I come back in to fill this. And you can see that the serrated blade on this multi-tool just cruises right through this dust creep. And so theoretically once you had dust creep you could use just about any wood tool to shape it however you'd like. Here I'm just getting a little bit of the extra out and making room for plaster so I can get back to that original plane. I'm not going to replaster this repair right now because I eventually plan to do the entire wall. So I'll make another video and you guys can see how I approach doing all that, wrapping the corners and tying the plaster in with the tile and the live edge shelf that goes around the top of the shower as well. So we've learned a few things. The uh, Duskrete seems to hold up extremely well even in the presence of ongoing leaks and we didn't see any mold or rot or insect issues and also uh, settled the question of whether or not we can use wood tools on this material after it's cured and absolutely uh, the, the tools do great just going through the sawdust with the binders. So. If that alleviates any fears anybody has, great. Please let me know in the comments if you're working on Duskrete projects yourself or if you have any other questions.